Come, brothers. Let us purge the alien. Hey guys, welcome back to another Purge the Alien podcast. Once again, Purge the Alien bringing you high quality battle reports, podcasts, and articles made for you by gamers for gamers. We are here live at the Michigan GT in Lansing, Michigan, staying at the beautiful Causeway Bay Hotel. And we have a good treat for you guys today because we have the entire Purge the Alien staff hanging out with us today doing the podcast as well. The only one that we are missing is Rob, our video expert. Um, he is sorely missed, but we're going to kind of Talk to you a little bit about how we feel about the tournament going tomorrow, how we feel about the list that we brought. We got a little preview of the mission packet, as well as a preview of some of the armies going around. Uh, personally, I am Mike, and I feel absolutely great about tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be competing for best Tyranids. Uh, feel good about the list. Feel good about the competition. Um, Chris, how do you feel about everything? Uh, I'm disappointed in myself. I know I let you down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I let everyone out, out there uh, down. I did not get my Death Guard ready in time, but... <gasps> Yeah, shocker. <laughs> That's what you call a pipe dream, and I was living it. But uh, reality hit, and I'm bringing uh, Dark Angels, and I'm going to rep the best Dark Angels in the uh, Michigan GT. So if you were listening to the previous podcast, you know Chris set himself an extremely ambitious goal of finishing an entire Death Guard army essentially in two weeks. Uh, he was planning on yeah. painting models that weren't even released yet. Um, so it was very ambitious. He gave it the good old fashioned college try, but unfortunately did not quite get there. So he's painting the, he's playing his beautiful Dark Angels army as well. Um, so he's Gary. We also have our special guest Ian here with us. Yeah, Ian, how do you feel? I'm Woo! back. I am back. Yeah. No, uh, this is looking really good. I have spent the last three months straight working on my all 100% Emperor's Children army for, uh, Heretic Astartes. Uh, I'm trying to try that out. I've got some good combos. I'm doing the Noise Marine Bomb, um, and I've got a Charybdis uh, Dreadclaw, okay. which, which will be pretty sweet. I'm, I'm bringing in some Forge World, and of course, the Decimator Demon Engine with Soul Burner Petards. You've got to. But I have custom made all of the Noise Marines. They're all based off of the Dark Vengeance Chosen models. I have arm swapped and head swapped, and the, I put way too much time into wow. it. Wow. Yeah. yeah nice. um, and I've got a really cool looking uh, uh, Sorcerer that I made from the Blood Angels Chaplain model. Okay. I, we'll get some pictures of it. I, I've, I've put a lot of work. I'm feeling really proud about it. But I like my list. It's feeling great. And hey, I'm going full Emperor's Children. When hey. was the last time you heard someone say that? Never. So you Ian's looks, list looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, obviously, you're going to see a lot of kit bashes up on the Instagram page. Uh, we might even be able to get Ian to kind of post a little like play-by-play on how he built some of these things oh, on a yeah, step-by-step sure. basis. Um Ian unfortunately ran into the buzzsaw of they mixed a couple of different factions. Yeah, here. yeah, you know, I mean, like, I'm a little, I'm a little butt hurt by it. I won't lie, but it's not a big deal. Uh, they said right from the start that if one faction or two factions, there's two less people, they're just going to combine the factions together. But I purposely went out of the way to be a hundred percent heretic Astarte so that I could play for that faction, so I could try to win that. I'm not trying to win the GT. I'm not. I'm not bringing malefic lord spam. I'm not being that <laughs> guy, right? But I'm trying to do full theme points full paint points, you know, and do good in a category I think I could have done good in. And now I'm lumped in with Malefic Lord Spam should it show up. Um, it is what it is. It's not a big deal. I'm still going to give it my all, and I'm going to try. My goal this year is I want to go 5-0, and oh, but if I do 4-1, and one, I'll be happy. Nice. So, and once again, not to bash Michigan GT, they gave us a heads all. up knowing yeah. that like they might be combining some things based on participation uh, or stuff like that. So like it's just kind of the way the dice rolled out, and Ian spent so much time doing this that obviously yeah. you're going to keep doing. Yeah, it was I, like for a brief second, I was like, you know what, I could go to Orcs. I have it all painted, but I was like, no, you know what, stick with my guns. Play the new stuff. You know what? Right. Exactly. Nice. So. so we got Sean. You've seen him play a million bat reps for us with yeah. a dozen different armies. It feels like. <laughs> <Kitchen> Sean, <laughs> what are you bringing? What are you playing? How do you feel? Well, originally I was going to bring my Chaos Space Marines with my my World Eaters. But then they announced a couple weeks before uh, when they released the Admet Codex that I was taking that back. Okay. Yeah. They're my first true love, and I have to go with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went through the Codex, and I love them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm super excited to play them. You know, it's just a fun army all around. I only have to use one book. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> happy oh, that that was here. Yeah. It's so cool. And uh, I just love the way they've been playing so far. How many did you lose last time? How many books? Last time you played Admech, how many oh, were there? Geez, well, I think I had five yeah, books or something say. like geez. that. Minimum four, not counting the rule book. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. And then if I wanted to take terrain or something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I wasn't yeah. even thinking of that. 
So yeah. streamlining 8th edition in its finest. I'm yeah. so happy. So do you know how many people are in your category? I don't. I know, I think it was pretty low. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it was like 6 or something mm-hmm. like that. Okay. It, okay. Yeah. So the nice part too about the Michigan GT, and once again, we had a whole Michigan GT podcast that, thanks to yours truly not being able to use technology at all, didn't get up to be launched because it was deleted, repeated, <laughs> a, a lot of problems. I take full responsibility for that one. Uh, but what the Michigan GT does is they basically allow you to play not only for best general, best appearance, but they also allow you to play for best out of your faction. So obviously, Ian's still shooting to get best for Heretic Asterius. I'm shooting to do best Nids. Chris has got an uphill battle doing best astro or doing best space marines, and then Sean. We don't know how many admec players yeah. or what they mix those things in there, so mm-hmm. we're trying to take home a bunch of trophies for it. Do you feel good? I mean, because your painting is exceptional. Yes, I do. I do feel pretty good about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I played against yeah. that wall. It was a brick house. Yeah, that yeah. was yeah. that was no joke. I'm bringing my robots. Up. <laughs> that yeah. I mean, so, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I don't think it can go wrong with them. And that's what they do with the Michigan GT that's really nice is when you do the best faction awards, not only the best battle points, but mm-hmm. it also includes your sportsmanship, includes your paint, so it really includes everything. Mm-hmm. So even if, you know, Sean happens to drop a game for some reason, his painting score is more than enough to make up for it. So, you know, we'll watch him bring him the gold, put some pictures up, <laughs> see lots of some trophies going through. Mm-hmm. So last person here, since we're missing Rob, is Josh, the power gamer himself, bringing oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> So what do you rock it? How do you feel? What's going on now that you have the most overpowered codex in the world? Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously we're not using that the... comes out tomorrow. Oh, sorry, yeah, 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 that's yeah. a fair point. Yeah, so obviously we're not using the codex for the GT, right? Way, way too late for that. Mm-hmm. Um, still using the index, but I mean, I just, I just still don't run the the power list. Mm-hmm. You know, I have twenty conscripts. I don't have forty, fifty, or anything yeah. like that, right? Um, still have a couple of Lehman Russes in there, three. So it's not like I'm gonna win as best Asher Militar or anything. But you might, right. you you might. Uh, you, you, know? you never know. You never know. You never so know. my my goal coming out of it is to pretty much just be in the top twenty five percent. To be I'll, honest, I'll say this: you know, just Josh is in a power game where when he goes, I'm bringing twenty conscripts instead of forty or fifty instead of being like I'm only bringing twenty and not two hundred. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. we're yeah. gonna see for sure. Um, mm. so you know, luckily Josh once again is an excellent painter, so. Makes up for all the issues of that part. So yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Do you feel good going in? Because we had a little special appearance tonight. We had a couple of the people from Persian Alien play in the team tournament as well. Josh and Sean played in the team tournament yeah. and did pretty well. And Chris did extremely well. We won't ask him how because there's some controversy. <laughs> I did amazing. Won every game. Okay? And that's all I'm going to say about it. We'll just say that the uh, scoring for the team tournament wasn't as transparent as some people would like to be, but once again, they put on an amazing show. Uh, I had a really good time this night, and everything went pretty well. So, Josh, wrap it up. Feeling pretty good with everything? No, feeling good. Feeling good. I mean, either way, it's going to be fun. Right? Yeah, I mean, nice. you get five games in, in two days. Two, yeah. Who doesn't like playing that many games? Right. I've got two days off, and it's on a Saturday right? and Sunday. Exactly. What? <laughs> so, real right. quick, yeah. I know... Ian, Sean, and myself were here last year at the Michigan GT. Mm-hmm. Were you guys the GT I last was year? Not, no, mm-hmm. no, I uh, this is my first one. So this yeah. is yours as well. Yeah. Okay, so we got two fresh Michigan GT faces. At least. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, this year is a record number. It's over a hundred people yep. participating. Uh, once again, if you're listening and you're one of those people that doesn't want to play in a tournament, I highly recommend you come out and play Michigan GT next mm-hmm. year. You just get an amazing opportunity to play, as Josh mentioned five games with some awesome people yeah. in an awesome environment um it's even michigan michigan state weekend this year so it's gonna be pretty rowdy tomorrow night it's gonna be pretty awesome yeah. Yeah. But cool mm-hmm. so one of the things we wanted to definitely hit up and talk to you guys about was a little bit of the missions but we'll do a quick break and then we're gonna come back for those no i'm yeah. getting hand signals <laughs> get closer to mike yeah. get closer yeah, to mike yeah, yeah. mike get i'm closer. worried you're a little you're shallow yeah. somehow i'm the only one that's apparently not talking loud enough which i've never heard once in my entire life <laughs> so that's what the hand signals are you'll never hear Sorry, that from me, so yeah. we're not Shut transitioning up. to a break once again you know we're just going by the flying by the seat of our pants we really did want to talk about the michigans at the michigan gt as well missions of the michigan gt yeah and basically uh the michigan gt ran several primers that many of us went to and they got a lot of amazing feedback mm-hmm. from those primers and they've adapted their missions as such so these are missions that will be available online for anybody that wants to start their own games at the store. Also, if you're playing your own home beer and pretzel mm-hmm. game, these missions are amazing things to start from that are different mm-hmm. from the book missions. Um, so Ian, what's so, like the first mission that we're looking at? What are we kind of expecting to play? Yeah, so what I really, really like about this, and you brought up a good point of the whole beer and pretzels kind of mission. So a lot of people I will hear complain about Eternal War missions because it's like, oh, I'm just going to beat up my opponent until the last minute until I can grab an objective and I'm done. 
Uh, I see a lot of people complain about Master of War missions because, oh, this the deck is stacked against me. I draw the wrong cards. So they do a mix of both, and you kind of have to deal with it. But it makes it an interesting game because now you're challenged to handle those Maelstrom missions and be in the offensive slash defensive positions mm-hmm. when you, the time is right to get it. Um, so mission one, it's called the Arrival. For this one, there are six objectives because we're doing Maelstrom of War. All six of the objectives are, are statically placed. They're placed in no man's land between the two deployment zones, um, 18 inches apart and 16 inches from the long table edge. So they're basically, you know, two, two, and two going across. The idea is we're going to draw three Maelstrom cards per turn, like your standard. Um, The ones that you achieve, awesome. Any uh, tactical achievement that you don't achieve are, I think, immediately discarded. It says, if at the start of a player's turn that player has less than three tactical objectives, he or she must generate new tactical objectives until they have three objectives. But no objectives will be drawn after turn five. So each turn, you're basically drawing up to three. At the end of the game, though, each objective itself is worth two points. So it's really, it's going to be, it's a mad dash to get two objectives and hold them. Um, me personally speaking with the list that I have, it's very alpha slash beta strike heavy. So I actually feel like I might struggle with this mission a little bit, Mm -hmm. but you know, it is what it is. I'm going to handle it as best I can, but this will be a really interesting, this one I think really will separate the, the, you know, cream from the crop, so to speak. Yeah. This is one of those interesting missions that is weird to sort of see as a first mission in Mm -hmm. a major tournament, primarily because it is actually relatively heavily weighted towards Maelstrom. Yeah. So... One of the things about it is if you control an objective at the end of the game, it's worth two points. Mm-hmm. Each Maelstrom mission is going to be worth at least one, yep. if not D3, which is going to be ranked two points yeah. per game. You know what? Actually, now that you say that, I'm sorry to interrupt, but they actually don't acknowledge that in here, that if you get a D3, it's worth a flat two. That's They've a done point. that in prior years, and I was expecting to see that, but now that I'm looking at the packet, it doesn't say that anywhere. True. It could be me making so. an assumption for that. But then again, they could make a last-minute announcement. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But the, one of the cool parts about this mission and why... A lot of people have a lot of fun with the Michigan GT, even if you're not bringing the most beat stick list, is because even if you're just able to grab some Maelstrom points by claiming the objectives in your deployment zone, by succeeding some other ones, you're still going to score points. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get just wiped off the table. You still have an opportunity to score. Doesn't matter if you're going up against an Adepticon winner or Mm -hmm. like a beat stick list, like you still can do things. Yeah. And that's nice. (laughs) The thing that I love about the Michigan GT, everyone here wants to play and have fun, win points, and get prizes and stuff. But what these guys include are what like back end prizes, I guess you could call it. And the bonus reward for this is I shall rise again. It says hopefully uh, a bad start doesn't set the tone for the weekend. To make sure of it, the first player that is completely wiped out of this mission wins a bonus prize. To claim the prize you must raise both your hands in the air and chant i shall rise again as loudly as you can until the tournament judges come over to your table that is <laughs> nearly uh let's see nearly tables are in- encouraged to enjoy it whistling slow clap the whole nine but you get the point yeah it really breaks up the competitiveness yeah I yeah. Love it. yeah 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 I mean literally if you get tabled you're winning a prize you're walking yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe game table's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a pretty cool way to do the prize list this yeah. year mm-hmm. for everything, so I pretty much like it for that part. Was it was mm-hmm. another one? Chris or Sean, you wanna see what the other, what's the mission yeah. number two? Here, Sean, I'll pass that over to you. Alright, mission number two is the hunt. Um so we went over this in a battle report, right? Yep. And I don't think it has changed too much. No. Um so the objectives we have first two objectives are placed in the opposites deployment zone. So I put one in my opponent's and they put one in mine. And then we alternate placing the remaining objectives in the middle. Um, and then we have we the same thing as the last one. We have tactical objectives. Um, and that one, we generate tactical objectives to the number of uh, markers that we hold. Oh, okay. Is that the one me and you played? I think I rock your world. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> So nice of you, Chris. Uh, I thought we were all friends. Right. One of the yeah, cool, one but... of the cool parts about a mission like that too is, you know, as Sean mentioned, it's the objective markers that you hold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it encourages you to actively take away from your opponent mm-hmm. and then capture yours yourself. Mm-hmm. So static play is really not very much encouraged for this one because if you take one objective and you hold your own, you're generating four objectives there too. You're going to yeah. very quickly outpace people for the game. And the way the Michigan GT scores, uh, which we didn't talk about in the first mission, is basically you take your points, and however many points you win by, 
you add it to 25, and that's your score up to 50. Mm -hmm. The other person minuses it from 25, and that's your score down to zero, obviously. Mm -hmm. So there's ways, basically, if you're able to, even if you start getting worked, if you can start taking objectives and getting more mail strip cards, you're going to be able to score points, no matter how good or bad your list is. And that's exactly why I took out my Devastators from my Dark Angels Castle list and added two Tactical Squads and two Rhinos, so oh. I could get those. A little more functionality, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to move around and yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And it, it's a lot funner, actually. I was testing it out. Mm -hmm. It's way funner to move your figures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We used your tape measure for uh, other right. things than shooting. I'm sorry, Chris. I believe the term is more fun. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the most funnest. The yes. most, the, most funnest. Funnest. The, the funniest. Well, that's one of the crazy parts, too, about it is you have to have mobility. If you have uh, a static, you know, Astro Military gun line, static gun mm -hmm. line for any army, mm -hmm. you're never going to get more than those three. And because it's bodies now, if you can body somebody off an objective, you're going to quickly put them in a bad space. Mm -hmm. So Sean has the remainder of the mission too. What's going on? Yeah, so um, the other, the end game objectives on this one is uh, kill points. Oh, So at really? the end of the game, each enemy unit killed is worth one victory point. But there's a special rule to that. And so... At the after deployment, bef before the first battle round, each player nominates one battlefield roll. Mm. And enemy units from that battlefield roll award two victory points instead of if killed instead of one. Okay. That's so good. basically, like, if Sean starts a game and he says, "I'm going to kill flyers this turn or heavy support," mm -hmm. yeah. any one of those units that he gets is worth two victory yeah. points instead of one. So it's a really nice thing because if you have somebody's list that's absolutely loaded with heavy supports, transports, fast attack characters, etc., mm -hmm. like you can pick those units based on what you're going to do that turn and maximize your victory point. So this is one of those ways that mission building helps diversify your list because if you're playing against one of those populists like that was at Nova where every single thing on the board is a character and they're assassins and Celestine and Gilliman and, and et cetera, just the Imperial suit. You can just pick characters and you are going to double up points on those people extremely quick. Well, no, it's not It's not characters like with the keyword. It's it's battlefield role. HQ, right? so sorry. HQs. Some of those are elites, though. Is, was I was That's a very good so, point. Yeah. yeah. But to, to go off your point, you can do a quick analysis of your opponent's list, right? Yeah. They're going to hand you a copy. Mm -hmm. You can be like, oh, you've got one, two, three troop choices and you have three heavy support choices. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to try and kill your heavies because they're most likely going to kill me back and I'll get double the points. Yeah. You're running eight assassins, I'm picking elites. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just the way it works out. Yeah. And so we have the other mission that we're going to talk about is mission number three. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, we'll be talking about the rest of the missions tomorrow, but um, tomorrow, which is Saturday, we are playing the first three missions, and then the two other missions are on Sunday. So we just kind of wanted to hit you like a day-by-day -day event, and then we'll give like a recap tomorrow. So I think Josh has the third mission, too. Yeah, sure. So the last one, uh, well, I guess mission three is a churn, which is actually what I think you and I played, Sean. Yeah. Um, so essentially it's table So wait, orders. real quick for listeners, which what did you two play when you played that? The churn. The so churn? So so what armies? They, oh, right. Right. yeah, so Imperial Guard. Yeah, and, National and, Guard. Yeah, you did that in that Yeah, yeah, I think. That was a recent battle report. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah, two ago. So if you want a visual of what we're talking about, that's an amazing battle report to check out on the Purge Alien YouTube page. Yeah, my uh, that was the one where my uh, lone... Leroy... <laughs> Leroy. Oh, yeah. If my, people my haven't lone. seen it, don't yeah. let them know. <laughs> I would just like to Leroy, say that the camera uh, angles are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that moving one is awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so the, so the churn, right? So it's a search and destroy deployment. So essentially table quarters with your nine-inch bubble around oh, okay. the, the center. Um, but what it is, is turns one through five, you draw four tactical objectives and you discard one, uh, right, at the beginning of each turn. So you essentially you have three that you go for each turn. Um, but the thing is, is that you discard all the tactical objectives that you don't get at the end of the turn. Mm -hmm. But you can spend a command point to keep whichever one you want. So obviously you get, if you're getting close to an objective or if you have a defend, Right, you pretty much have to spend that command point to keep it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the end game objective is essentially holding the table quarters. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. But the table so, quarters has a unique thing, right? Um, it does. So essentially, hold table quarters. So I'll read out loud. So each table quarter held at the end of the game is worth three victory points. Um, hold table quarters by having a unit entirely within a quarter without any enemy units entirely within the quarter. That makes sense, right? Characters with less than 10 wounds and units with the transport or flyer battlefield rolled 
may not hold or contest mm. closures. So looking at the meta, yeah. that means Storm Ravens can't, um, Gilliman can't, rhino Celestine can't. can't, Rhino, mm-hmm. Drop Pods. There's a lot of... Uh, yeah. Demon Princes are a classic example. So mm-hmm. a lot of those spammy mm-hmm. army lists that currently exist right now can't hold those table edges it's when you look awesome. at it. Yeah. Which is great because it's, once again, the mission packet list was not given out in advance. The, there were some of the things were talked about during the primers and people had an mm-hmm. idea what the missions were. But this is a way for your local scene to help create missions that impact the effect of spam. Because if you're running nothing but a brimstone horror list with Demon Prince backing him up and like hiding in there, uh, well, Demon Princes can't hold quarters, so you now then have to run those brimstone horrors across the entire board to get going. So there's there's some issues with it, and it's kind of nice to see lists actually handle those issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So definitely, yeah, definitely. that's pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Uh, you guys have anything before we, we hit the hay and, and try to succeed in the day? <laughs> Sorry, I did not mean to make that rhyme. Oh, this guy. You were a poet. I didn't even know. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'll stop it. All right. No, I think, I think everybody's yeah. excited for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> excited, nervous, nauseous. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Every, every, everyone's got their own goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that's pretty, like, clear for everything. Everybody wants to go through different. So, like... We'll give an update tomorrow to see how those goals have gone, see where everybody is standing at, Mm -hmm. where everybody is is where they want to be at. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the other things we'll do is we'll also talk about some of the the really cool armies that we saw. Not necessarily like the top lists, although something like jumps out at us, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll let you know. But we'll also be posting on the Instagram page nonstop any army that really like blows our hair back that just absolutely looks amazing. I'm going to try and get as many photos as I possibly can. Yeah, we're going to be flooding the Instagram page and probably even the Facebook page yeah. with photos as well. Yeah. Um, so if you're listening to this and you didn't check out our Instagram page, it's simply Purge the Alien is the Instagram page. And you should already have our Facebook page if you're listening to this. But if not, it's Purge the Alien on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty simple. So we'll go over all of that stuff tomorrow with hopefully nothing but good news. Uh, because I'm pretty sure we all expect the top tables to be essentially... The most overpowered list that Josh plays, which is, you know, oh, Master yeah. Militarum. <laughs> it's all a power right here. Yeah, yeah the, the Leaf Blower's back with some <laughs> Demon Spam, yeah. some Malefic Lord Spam. Yeah. Um, so, just just a lot of spammy lists are going to be at the top. Yeah. So we'll talk about those tomorrow to see if we're correct. That's what they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we'll go from there. Yeah, awesome. So, cool. Right. cool. See you guys tomorrow. All, right. all righty. And remember, purge the alien. PTA out. Hey everybody, this is Josh of Purge the Alien. As you may know, in addition to our podcast, we also report Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar Battle Reports. And we would love to have you on the show. If you would like to come play a game with us, and possibly have it posted to YouTube, please leave a message us on Facebook at Purge the Alien, or email us at contact at purgealien.com. We hope to see you soon. Now let's go ahead and get back to the show. Hey guys, welcome to another Purge the Alien podcast. Purge the Alien, once again, brought to you by gamers for gamers. We're bringing you high-quality battle reports, podcasts, and articles. Check us out on our Facebook page, Purge the Alien, as well as our website, PurgeTheAlien.com. Instagram page and YouTube page as well, all at Purge the Alien. So we're back here for day two of the Michigan GT. Uh, We have a similar round robin going on tonight as we were going on before. Um, three games are in the books for everybody. Everybody has had some different experiences, some good, some bad. And just going to kind of go around the room, kind of talk with them, how we felt the missions were going, how we felt the shirt was being run, everything else. Um, so, Ian, start yeah. you off with everything. Basically, you're contemplating a certain decision right now based yeah. on how the day went. So, yeah. well, talk about that. Okay, so first thing first, I'm going to just be really straightforward with you guys. I'm being a big baby. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I'm not feeling the greatest or whatever, but you know, it's, it's, uh, so I, I'm actually, I'm having a good time, all things considered, right? So I got my army downstairs, I got it set up, I got it judged, judges were very happy and pleased with the display and everything, which was awesome, but I'm kind of having this kind of, uh, moment, because I spent so long building and painting it, and I had it set up for 15 minutes and tore it down, and I'm like, oh, it's over, that's it. But, you know what, it is what it is. Um, the games, though, have been... Honestly, they've been fantastic. I love the the, the, the missions and everything, and, and the, the people that I've played against have been just fantastic players. Um, the first mission, I played against uh, a guy that was playing Astro Militarum, and uh, he stole the initiative on me, and I only have like four, I have six units on the table to begin with. He left me with two at the end of turn one, which is very much expected. 
Um, however, I was able to beta strike against him and actually do a lot of damage. I brought it back. The game ended two point difference. I had 18, he had 20. Phenomenal game. I, I love it when games come up that close and it's right down to the, you know, the, the end, so to speak, or whatever. It was cool. Um, going forward, though, the next round, I got paired up with another guy that was an all Grey Knights list. It was an Alpha Strike or a Beta Strike list. So when I got the first turn, he didn't even ask to seize the initiative. He's like, no, 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 you go ahead. And I have four demon units in my Chaos Space Marines army. So he's just like, here's a, you know, three damage smite, three damage smite, and just burn me down. Now, I still managed to handle it pretty well, and I still walked away getting nine points, even though I got completely tabled by turn three. Um, it was... Those, real quick, for those that don't know the square structure at home, you can get up to 50 points in a round. So Ian getting nine... It's not exactly like award winning, but it's not zero. It's not zero, and I was completely tabled on turn three. That means he gained a bonus eight points off of me. Which, yo, good job for him, right? You know, he played the mission and he played it well. We could not draw Maelstrom cards to save our life. I literally got two Maelstrom cards that I could possibly achieve. He got four. That was it. And we were drawing, I think, like three a turn. It was a terrible Maelstrom mission. But it was kill points, and I'm playing Chaos Space Marines and he's playing Great Knights, right? Um, but the last game I played against, which was really cool, was a mirror match army. So I am 100% Emperor's Children with Noise Marines and Obliterators, things like that. And the guy I played against went full Alpha Legion, but he had the 20 Noise Marines. He had the two squads of Obliterators. He had Cultists. He had the same Sorcerer with a Jump Pack. Like, we even had the same Demon Prince with the same, like, it was crazy. It was, was kind of cool. But <clears throat> the main difference was he ran six Cultist Troop Units. And I instead took a Charybdis Dropclaw from Forge World and a Decimator Demon Engine. And I won't lie, they really pulled their weight in that game. At the end, all I really had was my Demon Prince, the Decimator, and two partial units of my Obliterators. And I just managed to hold all of the board except for one. And the one that I couldn't hold, I just made sure that I could contest it. So he couldn't have it. So I got what, six or nine points from that alone, and then I was just rocking it on Maelstrom. So I got back, and I ended up with 40 points. So got 23 points the first round, nine points the second round, and I got another 42 points. Not the greatest, but I'm doing pretty good. And so what is your decision that you're making? My decision is, is whether I want to stay in the competition itself or go home. So this was something that we actually talked about prior, is that they merged the factions together, and because I'm no longer just Adept or Heretic Astartes, I can't compete for that. I'm actually competing for all Warp Touched and Chaos ones. Um, there are a lot of phenomenal players in this that are playing Chaos right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally 80 points behind the top guy, and I'm 24 points behind the guy that's in front of me. Yeah. So I would have to win my next game and him lose my game just to jump up one place, and there are four people above me. And that was something that was like, it's fair about the Michigan GT, and we talked about it in a previous podcast, is they do the right thing, which is essentially award every faction a prize at the yeah. end. And I mean, it's usually quite a large prize, an award for winning your best year faction. Um, most of the people that we brought from Purge the Alien are not exactly playing power codexes, except for Josh. Um, he's the only one. What? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> He's running Astro Military, which looks like on the top table. So really, like, most of you are playing to win, like, their faction prize, or they're just playing to have fun, yeah. really, one of the two. Um, and Ian he, is choosing to forfeit fun and everything else. Well, to, no, to that's the fun. thing, right? I'm, he I'm here for both. The, the whole reason I'm here is to try to win my faction, and my faction got absorbed into another faction. So I'm just kind of like, uh, what do I do, mm -hmm. right? Uh, my battle points are going so well. I did get a lot of pain points. Uh, according to the judges, I got 110 out of 120 possible. And then, of course, bonus points. So I did pretty good there. Um, so there's there's totally a chance that they could like call me down and be like, hey, we you know we'll want to do a vote or whatever and, and get you know better painted. But I don't think I'll necessarily get best painted, which I'm not going for that. Like I said, I was just trying to go for the the faction. And the fact that my faction got rolled up, I'm just. Eh. If you haven't played a large tournament before, day two or day three drops are extremely common. Mm -hmm. um, people that are out of it, people that want to free up their day to do other things, if they're like partying somewhere else in the location that's not as beautiful as Lansing, <laughs> um, will oftentimes do some of this stuff. But one of the other things that was key, and Ian talked about it a little bit with the units that he had that excelled, and we'll go over this later, is 
how basically just broken Forge World is right now compared to everything else. And, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about it like I a little bit. I won't agree with that, but I won't um, disagree either. <laughs> everyone from top tier t- players to bottom tier players yeah. basically can just recognize that Forge World frankly just has no clue what they're doing when they're writing rules. Um, all of the indexes are relatively looking good, but the moment that you bring in Forge World, yeah. it is exceptionally easy just to find things where like the authors were clearly intoxicated when they're writing rules <laughs> uh, because they're just flat out better than not only anything in the codex and in index that they had options to take, but also better than almost anything in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just weird the way they would choose to do some of those things. Yeah. Um, when we go around, when I talk about a little bit more about my games, I'll mention a couple of them. Uh, well, we got Shawnee McShawnshawn over here. <laughs> talk about some of his things. Sean, how's it been going for you? Uh, it's been going great, actually. Um, I'm doing about what I expected. Um, so my first game, I didn't win, but it was a fun game. Um, I went up against the, uh, Custodes. Ooh. Custodes and Gilliman. First time going up against them, uh, especially with running Admech. And, um, they, he had, uh, two Land Raiders, and I basically couldn't scratch them. That was, it, I put so much shots in there, I just wasted a whole bunch. But, eventually went all the down, but he ended up getting the win by, um, I think it was 11 to Five, something like that. Um, so I got I got a minor loss on that one. The second game was pretty cool too. I went up against the Thousand Suns army. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, oh yeah, uh, that Thousand Suns army looked really familiar, didn't yeah, it? Sean? Yeah, right. There's that the Golden Rhino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I actually managed to get a win off of that. I got to kill Magnus. <laughs> that was cool, uh, unexpected, but it took a lot. He kept he kept. Uh, Killing a prime marker, that was fun. Yep. That's right. He uh, kept forcing my robots into combat, so I had... They basically didn't shoot, other than Overwatch, which I took out about half of his wounds in Overwatch with Whoa. my robots. Awesome. Jeez. Yeah. So okay. I um I was able to Wrath of Mars him on oh, Overwatch, yeah. so I was doing Mars, Mars attacks. Along with, <laughs> yeah. Do not run. They will not hurt you. Along with fives and sixes. <laughs> um, so basically he kept uh, fighting the robots. And uh, I just kept pulling out of combat, shooting, he'd charge again. And they were tough enough to withstand it for three turns until I killed them. Um, and then after that, I shot. I That's the objective, the one where you have to uh, pick a unit. And, sure. So you know, for people that don't know, one of the missions in Michigan GC will post them <clears> online. Um, they did a version of a kill point mission where before, once the point was done, you could pick essentially a force organization chart specification uh, battlefield so you, roll. thank you battlefield roll so you can pick fast attack heavy support troops hq etc and basically anytime you killed one of those battlefield rolls you got double the kill points as opposed to just the one kill point so that was kind of the mission that Sean was talking about it's a nice little kind of break from just basic kill points yeah it did, it did good so i ended up on uh, killing all of his elite units and um that Basically swung me up into the victory after that, plus the other kill points from the normal units. Um, the third game, though, it was a little rough. Um, the guy I played, he was running. He was running uh, the Chaos Space Marines, the ones that negative one to hit. Alpha 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 And then he was also running uh, the the drop pod, the Cabal, oh, with no, the yeah. Zerkers in it. Oh, the uh, Charybdis. No, yeah, yeah, the Charybdis. Oh, yeah, the Charybdis. Right. My bad. And, um, yeah, so... Which only really chintzy <clears throat> players actually play. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 At least mine's real hey. and not 3D printed. That's true. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I was a little disappointed about that. But, but uh, anyways, he just... He, uh, with his Alpha Strike ability, he just got in and locked up all of my shooting. You know, so I was pretty much tied up. I tried falling back and shooting him, but, yeah. you know, it just wasn't quite that effective. Still not a big loss, though. I think I ended up with, I think my total was uh, 14 on that one. So not a complete complete loss. but mm-hmm. So I'd say I'm doing all right with the AdMac, where I've been playing them for, what, three weeks now? Yeah. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. I, I, I like the way they're going out. 
the the games have been pretty close matches. There hasn't been any major wins or losses either way, so I'm, I'm really happy about that. And John had a pretty unique experience that most people won't play in a modern 8th edition tournament, which is that he basically ran out of time and only got three turns. Um, much more familiar to like a 7th edition tournament and then basically anything else. Um, as just like a quick reminder to everybody, if you feel that someone is slow playing you, and or you feel that basically they're just not going at an appropriate pace, feel free to call a judge. Like if you're at one of these events, if somebody is taking just forever and they yeah. don't know what they're doing, don't make up their mind. In eighth edition, that's a really easy way in a tournament to kind of just eke out minor wins or minor losses and still get a lot of points. Uh, it's not something that's necessarily doing it on purpose. It yeah. could be something that just doesn't know what I was they're say, doing. Yeah. But at that point in time, there's usually like, Call them out, let them know what's going on, you know, let them know, like, it's basically a little bit unacceptable. It's for two reasons. One, it's not only to make sure that, like, your point is known before, like, the end the game is over, the results are in, that you, like, complained about it and put them on the clock. But the other thing is, basically, it's kind of also to give them a heads up that it's not an appropriate pace of play. Um, if you play golf and somebody's taking an hour in every single hole, it's not fair. If you're doing anything, yeah. like, where somebody's taking up that amount of time, it's just not right. So... So a weird thing that we had happened. And then uh, passing over to Josh, who's the only person playing an overpowered. Oh, my oh, God. He's like, <laughs> I'm not even, I'm, I'm still playing Fluffy, man. Like, okay. it's not even that bad. You're, you're playing so overpowered, I think your uh, plane exploded. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, yeah. So, so. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, my, my flyer, my adventure strike fire. I come back and I just see this look of sorrow on people's faces next to my, uh, my cart, right? <gasps> and they're like, oh, we got to tell you something. Apparently, it fell off the car and just exploded into pieces. Yeah, it's a little oh. rough. It's okay, though, right? So, I mean... You tested out those new deep strike moves. Yeah, right? that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good, right? It, it broke at all the spots where you, you naturally glued together anyways. Fixed it tonight. It's all good, right? Mm -hmm. Guys are super cool about it. Let me some super glue and stuff. So, it's it's all good. Not only that, but I probably shouldn't have had it right there. As, as right? a, as a yeah. pro tip from somebody who plays a lot of flyers and does a lot of stuff, even when you're putting them on the table, just don't put them on the base. Yeah, yeah. take them off the base like, every literally, time. Literally put it on the That's base my if bad. it's needed, but otherwise, it's gonna fall. Someone's yeah. going to bump yeah. you. Yep. 40k players, not the most spelt individuals trying to navigate yeah. between multiple rows of tournament tables. Like, and boy, they're tight this year. Yeah, yeah they are tight. 100, yeah, 100 really people, tight. it's not, not a thing. Yeah. But Josh, how are your games going with the power list? Oh my god, man. <laughs> just keep grinding it in. <laughs> Shut the All laptop. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So so it's it's I'm, I'm a zero and three right zero and three so they've with, been going good right powerless well yeah, powerless whatever man <laughs> so so I actually played the the guy that Sean played uh, the first time around his name is Escape Me Adam I think right um, I think so. yeah yeah so so pretty fun game right um, the Caribdis drop claw came in pretty much destroyed my you know gun line that I had set up um, he was running a uh, fire raptor. As well, oh, yeah. so that was rough, cool. right? Yeah, um, and then two other flyers, and I mean those those berserkers are just tough to deal with too, mm -hmm. right? So you gotta kill them before they get to you for sure. Otherwise, the two rounds of attacks really yeah. mess you up, right? Um, second game was was real close. Uh, I thought I was gonna get it. The one guy was like, uh, Mitch, um, <laughs> yeah, good guy, right? Uh, <laughs> he's like, well, hopefully, you know. He was trying not to get tabled, and, you know, of course, he, he won it on me. Uh, three three points over what I had. Um, awesome game. You know, shout out to Mitch for, for a good game there. Um, he had the, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, the Eldar big vehicle. The Lynx? No, not the Lynx. Um, Forge Wolf. Yeah. Forge Wolf. Lynx is a Forge Wolf. No, Scorpion. Scorpion. Scorpion, oh, Scorpion. Oh, really? yeah. Scorpion, yeah. Wow, I managed classic. to kill it last turn. Wow, yeah, that okay. was that was awesome. That's so that was cool. a fun game. Um, and then last game, uh, ended up getting tabled on on turn three or four. Yeah. So more more uh, corn berserkers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So good stuff. Yeah, all in rhinos just rushed up. Wow. He got first turn, first turn charges. Nice. So good stuff. That's good cool. stuff though. Yeah. Cool. And then also somebody else has been having quite a bit of luck with their overpowered space marines <laughs> list. Chris. Yeah, who cares, really? I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's all about the experience, and I feel like this is experience of, like, innocence lost, because I've never played GT or competitive play before. I've always played, like, the home 
store game, and it's always been a lot of fun. This was a nightmare. <laughs> I hated it so much. So much salt. It's uh, so... Yeah. I am a fucking or a salty guy. Yeah. Um, uh, it was a lesson learned. Mm-hmm. Um, but... All my games were fun to play against people, and the people I met were awesome to play against, and that is the story. So, yeah. so I think Chris got a little bit of a uh, baptism by fire. Yeah. yeah. Which which happens to a lot of tournament players where if your local meta isn't very competitive, regardless of if you think it is or not, you find out when you go to a large tournament. And then you quickly realize that the list that you feel is overpowered in your local scene and that you're just destroying people with, turns out that you get smashed over the head with it when you run it in, like, a competitive scene. Like, that really gives you an idea of how your local meta is, is basically the way it plays out here. Um, So it is kind of interesting, because Chris isn't bringing a bad list by any means, Um, but once again, at a 100-person GT, you can definitely run into some buzzsaws lists that... You know, he's not going to have a chance with without bringing like no, those no. super optimized list as possible. Mm-hmm. So, that was always a word. And, and, you know, you know, tournament play and competitive mm-hmm. play is not for everyone. True. Mm-hmm. And I totally am embracing that. Mm-hmm. And I enjoy my, you know, store games a lot more than my competitive tournament game. Mm-hmm. And that's nothing to say anything against the tournament. Oh, Every, no. All the judges, amazing. Everyone I played against were super great. Uh, it's just not my style. I don't like playing against Forge World nonsense and not you know, constantly. We'll, we'll talk constantly, about that. you know. Yeah. And I just like the <laughs> casual game, and I finally have realized that, and I'm accepting that. Yeah. And I think that's okay because I think sometimes players kind of feel like they have to be competitive and they just can't fit in. Mm-hmm. And I think it's okay not to fit in and play the game you want to play. Exactly. And I am an advocate for playing the small town game. There you so, go. There you go. And that's the thing, if nothing else, you get five games in in a two-day period, which a lot of people can't say they do that because it's really hard to schedule those games usually outside. Mm-hmm. So it is nice to be able to get those things in. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure. me, this will segue really well talking about Forge World. Um, my first game that I played, it was a class 8th edition game where I went first and essentially tabled him in two turns. Um, he hid Amidon behind bunkers, which just allowed me to just collect all the objectives. Because um, I couldn't table him, really, because he just hid Amidon behind a wall. Um, so I got full 50 points there. Um, I'll skip the second game for right now. Uh, third game I am super salty about because I was completely sober and did not make wise decisions. <laughs> this is why we eat food. Which is both... <laughs> <laughs> it keeps us just alive. Skip lunch. <laughs> it nourishes our brains. Which is both uncharacteristic mistakes and... Odd, I blame the heat of the room. <laughs> it was really so hot. hot. Yeah, it was so hot. hot. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know what it was, but I'm going to say that it was heat exhaustion and heat stroke because I made a <laughs> lot stroke. of questionable decisions. I let my opponent go first. Um, I did a lot of weird things. Uh, long story short, I did not win that one. Um, the middle game is kind of the one I want to talk about because it ties into everything that we mentioned with Forge World. Um, so after going 50-0, and 0, I basically was at the top table and I was playing Josh Death. Um, people have probably see him in a lot of different podcasts or Bell of Lost Souls, Frontline Gaming. Uh, he won the Michigan GT last year, one of the top ITC players. Um, funny part is he brings a kick-butt list because he exploits a lot of loopholes, but he's also a really fun guy to play with if like you're going in there. Um, so it was a really good time that we had. Um, I got 14 kill points in the very first turn, so like was definitely able to like punch well with it. But then basically what happens is I destroyed almost half of his army in the first turn, and then all of his Forge World units came in. And he is one of those guys where he knows something is broken and will readily admit that it's broken. And he has actively been trying to campaign both in the ITC and the Michigan GT to ban Forge World because Forge World is just so over the top um, in certain things that it's, it's just beyond recognition of anything that you know for 40k. You're playing a local tournament, at the very least, until you can see it, uh, you should play 0-1. to one. Uh, Michigan GT should have done it. They've done it every yeah. single year except for this year. I uh, don't know why they made that decision. I'm sure they regret it, because Forge World has been the number one complaint about thing about the GT, as you've heard from everybody going around. Um, the other thing is just flat out, like, Games Workshop does an amazing job in 8th edition 
creating the indexes, creating the codexes, regardless of what you think about, like, Josh the overpowered Astro Mogera, <laughs> like, they're doing a good <laughs> job, like, with them. And the problem is, is that Forgeful people just have no idea, apparently, how to write rules. Um, so one of the things that Josh Death ran against me multiple units of is essentially there are 56 points for a five-man squad, including somebody that can give orders, of Elysian drop troops with four rapid-fire plasma, can- plasma guns that deep strike. So essentially, you drop them in no matter what, you're in rapid-fire range, you're hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, plasma guns that are strength eight, negative four for the red, negative three or four. Yeah, it's negative three. three. Yeah. It's three or four, I don't remember mm-hmm. which one, but it's just a flat three damage. That's under 60 points. Mm-hmm. So you can literally just take any one of those and they will immediately erase any mm-hmm. monstrous creature that you have because yeah. it's eight shots wounding on threes or fours at the most and flat three damage when you're not going to get a save. You just literally, it's a 60 point unit that just drops in and just destroys things. Um, he also ran the two Forge World Punisher um, flyers, uh, which have, for some reason, they're under 200 points. Their main gun is a 40 shot. It's 220s. Yeah, it's 220 right? yeah. Punisher cannons or something like that. <laughs> so you fly across the table, it's 40 shots, hitting on three, strength five, so like you're destroying all chaff under 200 points. That is T7 with 14 wounds. Um, I mean, like, just once again, just some of the Forge World stuff is broken. I don't know where Forge World got off on their math. Don't but every sense. Forge World unit that I played, for whatever reason, has a million shots. And nothing in Games Workshop Codex is anything. I played the Relic... What, what do you call it? Relic Leviathan? Dreadlock? Oh, oh, yeah. The, the, yeah. And, Leviathan, like, it's Forge World, yeah. and it's got somehow 40, shots also well, at, like, straight it's seven. A literally walking Land Raider. Yeah. It's T8, 16 wounds with a T8. 14, 14 wounds. 14 wounds with a 2-up save. Yeah, with a 2-up save. <laughs> but has 40 shots. Like, like, I don't know where Forge World gets off with, like, the idea that everything is more shots than anything else any codex can provide. Yeah, like, yeah. literally, uh, how many shots does your Wyvern have? Uh, 46. 46? Mm-hmm. So, if Josh is uh, rolling average, yeah. you're rolling 12 hits. 14. Yeah. 12 to 14 hits. Mm-hmm. So, it literally... 12 to 14 t- shots, then hitting on fours. Yeah. It's, Re-rolling, but yeah. It's literally... Re-rolling t- wounds. wounds. Yeah. It's literally taking you... Three to four wyverns to get the same impact as one of these flyers yeah. for half the cost. With all the mobility, more wounds, everything else, less slots, like and still everything. Hard to hit. It's still hard to hit. Yeah, you're talking like, about the Vulture? Yeah. Vulture? Yeah. 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 Once, so if you're playing in your local scene, just dial back Forge World for a little bit. Um, a lot of people will get online and say that that's an overreaction, that Forge World isn't really that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Um, it legitimately is if you're not playing Chaos or Imperium. If you're playing a Xenos Army, you don't really get a lot of Forge World that's going to smash face. Um, you're giving just more advantages to the two top armies anywhere. Um, it's just something that needs to be stopped. And I know that every single person around the table so far has had a bad experience with Forge World solely just because of how broken the rules are. Back to the edition. Anybody else want to toss in? Um, the only thing I would say is like there are a couple of units that are like, eh, that Forge World have. Like the other one that I run is a uh, Sonic Hellbrew. Sure. It's basically, it's got two Blastmasters on it, but it's an FAQ entry. It's not even like, it wasn't there. Mm-hmm. They kind of forgot about it. Right? Yeah. Um, but the thing that I like about Forge World stuff, and this is me as a hobbyist and collector, is a fantastic centerpiece. Yeah, but that's why I, that's yeah. why I own one of each, and I don't spam five Decimator Demon sure. Engines. You know. I think the issue is that for a lot of them, especially when you're just looking at like the uh, yeah, uh, looking at the Elysium drop troops basically that you get for them, yeah. is that it's literally a guardsman with the plasma gun. Right. Like mm-hmm. it's not even a Forge World model. It's cheaper or than the, yeah, yeah, it's cheaper yeah. than Scions. And then the other thing is too is like malefic lords, which somehow aren't being spammed out of nowhere. Yeah. Like once again, like the <laughs> things that people are complaining about now is not Codex, it's not Index, it's Forge World. Yeah. It's back to 5th edition again, where, like, they didn't know what to do, and everyone's running a Red Scorpion Librarian, so you can pick all your powers. And, like, <laughs> else, like it's, it's, you're getting back to that point. Um, GW will never do anything about it, so it's really, at this point, up to tournament organizers to do. Yeah. So whether it's a flat ban, or if the ITC wants to step up, like they did a couple years ago, which 
I, I don't want to, whatever intern they forced to do this to have them do where they did an entire list of what's approved and what's not. Yeah. Um, that's insanity. But if somebody wants to do that, I'd love to see the list. <laughs> um, so it's pretty interesting. But something has to be done about Forge World just to give everybody a good time. Um, and the funny part is, by the way, when I played Josh, um, because it was the best game I've had probably in the last two or three Michigan GTs, because uh, he was an awesome guy to play against, you know, even he's sitting there campaigning against it. Like, he's being like, I was like, wait, they do what? And he's like, yeah, they're unbelievably broken. Like, no one should play them. But the fact of the matter is, he's one of the top tournament players in the ITC. If he wants to survive the top tables, he's going to bring them because, frankly, you don't know if your opponent is not going to bring them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's just a huge issue that goes about it. Um, one of the other things he brought was the searchlights. Um, oh. I, don't think, I, don't, I don't even know if it has, like, a real model because he scratch built them. <laughs> Uh, but it's basically like an Imperial Guard unit that you just point, you get plus one to hit like yeah. the unit the searchlights. I don't for. think they make them anymore for Forge World. Uh, wow. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, you just, you just yeah. point like 40 points a model. So it's basically like, this 30, is kind of what... 36 we found it. Oh, 36 yeah. points? Uh, okay. so the with a heavy bolter. A twin heavy bolter, 36 points, and with the searchlight. Wow. Yes. So it's kind of weird because, once again, this is the difference between Imperium and Xenos and everybody else. Somehow... You know, Josh's broken codex and index got basically marker lights from town. Yeah. <laughs> for, for no points yeah, that cheaper. don't roll the hit. You literally try to flashlight. It's yeah. pretty incredible. So once again, Forge World, use it at your prayer. I mean, yeah. the models are amazing, though. I mean, yes. I love the Forge World models. Yeah, yeah it's just the rule sets are a little, yeah. a little tough, yeah. right? I mean, I ran my Avenger Strike Fighter, which isn't, like, amazing. Two Lattice Cannons, two Auto Cannons, and Avenger... Bolt cannon, right? And actually, yours actually kind of has a problem too because it doesn't have the, it doesn't get plus one to hit against. It's something. always minus it's one. It's always for all, minus all, one. So you're like all its weapons are like heavy. Fives or force, four fours. Force. Yep. Yeah. So, so fifty fifty. Josh, yeah. astronaut Sam player using Forge World. <laughs> oh <laughs> God! <laughs> Never hear the end of it. Just I know, right? There. Yeah. All right. Well, well knows. we've got two more rounds tomorrow. That Ian will. Maybe. I may or may not be here. You go, this guy. Know. Yeah, that's, right. the, that's the promise. Yeah. Um, I think everyone here is just kind of playing to do it. I am technically yeah. still in the running for best Tyranids, even after a debacle of a third game. Debacle. Um, I'm currently 11 points behind the person that is sitting behind me that you might have heard cackling in the background. <laughs> oh. um, hey, Ryan. <laughs> so it'll be a very interesting day tomorrow. Um, one of the advantages of playing so poorly is hopefully I will get a baby seal that I will be able to club over the head. <laughs> baby. Get, so I've never heard of the term baby seal until I came to this oh, tournament. Sorry, yeah. oh, and Mike's yeah, just been throwing it around it, like crazy. Oh, so, yeah. so basically a baby seal for those that aren't paying attention is essentially somebody that once again is coming to a tournament, not knowing exactly what's going on. Doesn't really know how to play the list. Doesn't know how to target prioritize. There's a lot of reasons, but basically it's like a really easy game, whether the matchup is not the best or not. It's just somebody that like, it's, yeah. You sit down at the table and you know immediately that you're going to win the game. And you basically are just trying to figure out the max amount of points that you can get. So um, it's those poor newcomers poor. coming to the tournament. That Mike is preying upon. No, no, no. Preying yeah. on. No, 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 no. AKA me. No, it's not that. Like like, like in my game too, right? It was a Grey Knight player who was doing an alpha slash beta strike. And sure. I'm a chaos face ring player with demons. Like you can look at that and kind of go, yep, I'm the baby seal this game. How long do I have to live? Yeah, right? exactly. And, yeah. and it was turn three. And I'm like, Yep. You know, yep. so, and one of the things, so to be a, to be, <laughs> to, to be also a true baby seal, you also have to not realize the tournament environment. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, as Ian was most likely trying to do that game because he walked away with a colossal nine points in that one, is he was actually trying to get points. Yeah, a lot of times when you go to a true baby seal, they are trying to really get objectives or position themselves to play the mission or do anything else. It's literally like. You smash them really hard the first turn or two. They kind of just want to go fight some stuff, which is fine by you, and you, and you win a lot of points. Mm -hmm. And it sounds super cutthroat, but I want to win best tyrants for like the third or fourth year in a row, and I really don't want to see Ryan and more importantly Paul <laughs> win best tyrants because it's going to make me sad. Um, and Michigan State just won, so I'm extremely happy right now. Go but, green. Go white. And, but you know... One of the things is just, if that doesn't work out, I'm going to be a very sad panda mm -hmm. on the next podcast. So. All right, guys. Well, let's leave it here for a second. We've got two more rounds. 
if you guys have any thoughts or questions that you have about the tournament scene or about Forge World or about composition in a tournament itself, I think you guys, this would be a really good time to post those questions and put them on our Facebook page. So remember, Purge the Alien on Facebook. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you're thinking or what you want to see or hear. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Yep. And if we were too vague, ask us to clarify too. Because once yeah. again, we're doing this at like midnight. So yeah. let us know. Thank you guys all for listening once again. We appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Josh again, and on behalf of everyone at Purge Alien, we just wanted to say thank you. Thanks for listening to our podcast, watching our battle reports, and reading our articles. We are here for you, producing content by gamers, for gamers. So thanks again for joining us, and we're happy you're here. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the show. All right, hey guys, Josh here from Purge Alien, um, sitting here with... Ian, yeah. hello again. Hey. <laughs> uh, Chris. And we have Sean on Hangouts. How you doing, Sean? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, awesome. Uh, yeah, so we're here kind of wrapping up the, the coverage of the Michigan GT. You know, we're sitting here uh, a couple days past the GT. We're luckily we were able to all get together again. Um, we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. Um, but we just want to couple, dive into a couple different topics, talk about the games we played, um, talk about, you know, what we liked, what could be improved about the GT, um, and some other closing thoughts. So mm -hmm. we'll kind of kick it off, do a little round table, um, talk about the games we played. So Sean, how were your last couple games on Sunday? Um, so my last little couple games were pretty interesting. Um, I actually got paired up with one of our buddies, Zach O. Um, and he is a uh, pretty decent Tyranid player, um, which was kind of cool. We, we like to uh, banter quite a bit during our during our games. Um, so I was kind of relieved going up against... Um, the game wasn't set quite in my favor, I would say, because we were using the night fight mm -hmm. special rules. And being an ad mech shooting army in night fight doesn't really go together very well. Mm -hmm. And he's running an assaulty army, so it was perfect for him. Um, but the game went pretty, pretty fine. Uh, the the end score, I think he won by, I think he had 10 points on me or maybe more, like 10 okay. to 14 points on me. Um, second game, though, by that time I was getting pretty tired. Oh, being yeah. that we did the team tournament on Friday, we did three games on sun Saturday, and then it was our fifth game oh, my gosh. For, so, for Sunday. I was kind of yeah. just not into it. Um, I ended up going against a unit of orcs and right off the bat, he got lucky and got a charge off and locked my robots up in combat. Turn one? In turn one. Oh my gosh. Pretty That's much, rough, you know, a fish out of water the entire game. Yeah. Cause those robots, you um, have six robots, right? That are. Yeah. I, ran, I was running yeah. six robots yeah. and I couldn't shoot them yeah. at all. Um, I was also running my, my dune crawlers, but they weren't doing and much. I just feel like I'm going to just cut them completely out of my list from now on. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's unfortunate. But, uh, so that game, I pretty much lost by a landslide. Yeah, yeah, that's not fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so we, we played, what, eight games total? Jeez. Um, yeah. It was insane. I mean, I was feeling it by yeah, the end. I'm not going to lie, I died after three. <laughs> Literally, like... Yeah. <laughs> that's impressive. So. Yeah. I was amazingly sore like when I got home Sunday. I was like, I am sore. That's yeah. I'm really badly out of shape or no, it's you, a lot more no. physical so, than you think. So that's the thing, right? So I've had people actually mention this and, and people are like, Oh, you stood and played you know games for you know nine hours? Oh, that must be so nice. You know, it's actually a little bit more exhausting than you think. You put a lot of stress in your back as you're mm -hmm. leaning over the tables. I'm not going to lie. There were a lot of people there this year. It was a yeah. warm event, it right? Was, yeah. I was sweating yeah. all day. And, of course, we're all being a bunch of idiots and wanting to party, right? Sure. So, <laughs> you know, but it was it was fun. It was an enjoyable event for sure. So, but, yeah, man. Yeah, my voice like is still recovering. Yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> 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 that wasn't sound effects. That was actually <laughs> Ian. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Yeah, no, it was it was a ton of fun, right? Um, so, Chris, how did it go for you? Oh, Sunday? That yeah. was my greatest victory because I dropped it like it was hot and I went home. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was not feeling it. I yeah. got Forge World beaten to death and I was salty and 
grumpy and no, I, it was a favor for all my opponents Sunday because I would have been an ass <laughs> and not enjoying myself and making it not enjoyable for the other players. For sure. Dropped my dark shroud on the way out. Lost my rift cannon. Oh. Um, so yeah. yeah so right. literally insult to injury. Yeah, it was uh. like here. There's the door, and here's my boot. boot. Oh, yeah. Have a good one. But plus, I had to move. Like yeah, I should have been yeah. moving. Like I'm moving closer to the studio here, and um, I should have been moving that weekend. But instead, I was playing Warhammer and drinking heavily. Yeah. So, but other than that, mm-hmm. yeah, Sunday was great for me. Just, just yeah. clarify, drinking chocolate milk, right? We're talking yeah. about chocolate milk. Yeah, right? with mixed with, you know, vodka. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Milk was a bad choice. Uh. <laughs> So, mm-hmm. how about you, Ian? Um, well, I kind of fell into the same boat, actually. So, this was my fourth year going to the Michigan GT, and this was the first year that I just felt absolutely exhausted. Yeah. It was, in my opinion, it felt like it was a good 85 degrees in there the whole time. It was hot. I think I drank about a gallon of water, and I went to the bathroom, like, maybe a total of 10 times the whole time I was there. Yeah. You know, and that's including with lunch break and whatnot. It was just... Um, it was, it was stifling. It was, you know, kind of rough for me. So, but I don't know for me, there was a couple of things that happened. One, I had kind of an emergency that came up at home and it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, I can run home and can, you know, kind of take care of it. Or I can try and stick it out and hope that everything was good. I wasn't having the greatest time. Unfortunately, my opponents were awesome, extremely good sports. Um, The first guy was amazing. We were only off by two points. The Mm -hmm. second guy was pretty much a no-brainer, and it was still a great game. And the third game was a mirror match, right? So that was just a lot of fun. Um, It was just the the overall theme this year kind of didn't stick with me. And so I basically said, you know what, I'm going to call it quits. I'm going to go home, save my energy, you know, stuff like that. And, and I'm glad I did because I ended up getting really sick the morning that I, that next morning on Sunday. So, oh, man. Um, so I spent all day kind of recovering. <laughs> okay. No yeah. So, but, so you got sick. Yeah. Mike got sick. Oh, did he really? Mike got sick the next morning. I actually had to drop because of it. He oh. actually stayed in the hotel room, late night checkout or late checkout, yeah. 2 p.m. checkout and just stayed there and slept the whole morning. Oh, he was man. Sick as well. So I don't know if it was okay. the pizza we ate or yeah. what it was. But. Mine was the alcohol. <laughs> That's why I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was hungover. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I felt great. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah but. You know, well, I, I, I didn't feel like super terrible, but I definitely I woke up at like, I got home at 2 a.m. and I woke up at 6 in cold sweats. Oh, so clearly okay, I was getting yeah, sick yeah, or something, yeah, exactly. right? So, so hopefully you staved it off. And, yeah, 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 I feel fine now, thank God. And knock on wood. Oh, so. yeah, for sure. But. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, for, for me, you know, I, I stuck it out, um, did the last two games on Sunday. Again, great games, great op- opponents all around. Um, lost my first one um, due to victory points and then won my second one actually uh, through a table. It was just a bad matchup at, yeah. at that point, right? I mean, he was running all infantry, so he had to foot slog it over to my tanks, and that's that's just never good, mm-hmm. right? Um, but other than that, it was, it was awesome, right? Um, super fun time. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty great. Right. Yeah, yeah. I ended up going four and one for the, or excuse me, one and four for the for the tournament. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um, so I think we're going to kind of go around and talk about a couple of things that we really liked yeah. about the tournament, yeah. um, whether it's the, the entire weekend, mm-hmm. it's the GT tournament, the team tournament, just mm-hmm. the event overall. Yep. Talk about a couple of things that could be improved and go from there. Yeah. So uh, who wants to kick us off here? I'll, I'll start if you all right, want. Do sure. it to it. So, all right. So like I said, I've been to the Michigan GT. This was my fourth year now. I love this event. This is like sure. the one big event I can look forward to every year. They do a painting contest. You have your army display, yeah. you know, and then you play five rounds of 40K. Like who doesn't love that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, it's, it's seriously like even right now, I'm sitting here right now, I'm going next year. Like, oh, yeah, you definitely. know, like yeah. there's no question about it. I had a lot of fun. This was honestly the first year I felt like, I know I only played three guys, but I knew a bunch of the guys that were there, but I didn't run into one guy that I felt like was, wow, where did you come from, right? Everybody was super, super cool. And even if they were running that really, really OP list, they told you up front, they're like, hey man, look, I'm here to try and win the tournament. Here's my list. Here's what I do, just so you're aware. Like they were right up front with you. And I think that was very polite, Mm -hmm. you know? I would not give anybody less than a gold star, you know, yeah, on this. So I, I really, I really enjoyed the atmosphere and what everybody had to offer at the event. So yeah. awesome, awesome. Um, any other thoughts? 
Chris or Sean? Yeah, I just completely agree with what Ian has to say. Really cool. I had a lot of fun just hanging out with a lot of our friends that we know. Uh, plus meeting a lot of new pe- people from the area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. The, the one thing I really love, and obviously this is you know something that they don't necessarily control, is the location. Right? Yeah. I mean, the fact that it's in Lansing, and we're based out of Ann Arbor, is just amazing. You can yeah. drive an hour up, <laughs> yep. right, and get there. I mean, we obviously still stay in the hotel and everything, but it's just super cool to not have to drive down to Adepticon for four, four or five hours. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's awesome that we're, we're starting to get more and more local tournaments, right? Um, I, I absolutely love that fact. And the, the location, the, I guess... The hotel that they had at was was pretty good yep. on the inside, right? Mm-hmm. They they had, you know, pretty much everything you can think of or mm-hmm. want, right? We played in a pretty nice suite, um, pretty awesome. And then again, the the GT was, I mean, it was a lot of fun, right? Yeah. The team tournament was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we ended up playing Chris and <laughs> Gino. Gino. Sean and I played Chris and Gino at the end, so it was a nice kind of little kickoff to the weekend. Yeah. Right? Okay. My favorite game. Your favorite game. <laughs> Boys away party. from home. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any other thoughts uh, about anything that you guys really liked about the GT this year? It was just, like, this is the last tournament I've been to was a Rogue Trader tournament in, yeah. like, third edition. <gasps> wow, wow. So, so it's, yeah. it's crazy to see how much mm-hmm. the game, you know, has changed and the competitive structure has changed. Yeah. It's a lot less, not... It's not less friendlier, no. but it's way more competitive. It's way more cutthroat. Yeah, it oh, like, definitely is. Whoa! And yeah. it was. I'm gonna say that even compared to seventh edition, to be perfectly honest, like yeah. I was surprised yeah. with some of the stuff that was coming out of there. I shouldn't have been. I should have been on the internet more. Shame <laughs> right. on me. <laughs> Good that you weren't. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah. Exactly. I know one thing that like Adepticon has is like more friendly type tournaments. So yeah. maybe that's something that they'll incorporate in future years yeah. is, you know, do like a 2K friendly tournament yeah. or whatever it is. That way you don't always see these OP lists coming yeah. out, right? Mm-hmm. So. so, cool. Um, any other things that you think could possibly be improved for next year? Um... Yeah, I think there's definitely some room for improvement. Yeah, um, sure. So the number one thing that I'm going to jump at is probably probably one of the bigger issues, I think. At, at least in my opinion. I asked a couple of people, and I had some agreements with that. Um, they did a lot of last-minute changes, and a lot of them were over the deadline or on the day of. Mm-hmm. And that really... To me, that's not very fair. So I went to the event looking to do the full display and the painting contest and then play the, the tournament, right? Sure. And try to win my category. So I show up Friday evening and I find out that if you have duplicate units outside of troop choices inside your army list, you get docked points. Yeah. And that was not something that was made very clear at the beginning because I had actually had a prior list that would have had extra troop units and a rhino instead of my second obliterator squad. Mm-hmm. Whether I would have performed better on the table or not doesn't really care to me. So I would have appreciated had knowing that, you know, at least a week in advance. Um, which then actually falls into my second point, which is I feel like they did not take advantage of social media enough. Mm. Because there was a lot of times that people were like asking questions and they're like, oh, well, we did a poll and nobody wanted it or everybody wanted it. So we just went with it. And it was like, wait a minute, time out. I'm one of the guys that paid for my ticket in advance on release day and I didn't know about these polls at all. Yeah. So that would be something I would say that they could probably improve, you know, find more platforms. Um, yeah, Facebook's the big one, but I don't care. Make it a post on you know Instagram. Sure. <laughs> and you know that they have a, 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 a poll coming up. Um, something like that anyway. So um, outside of that, I mean, there were some small nuances that was with the, the composition of the format. But mm-hmm. those are the two things that I think were kind of important to me. Sure. So what sure. do you guys think? One thing from that I think is being that it's a uh, ITC major event, yeah. that they should definitely take uh, advantage of using Best Coast pairings. Oh, I mean, that yeah. app is so amazing, mm-hmm. and it helps streamline so much. Yeah. No more rushing up to see where you, who you're paired with. Mm-hmm. It just goes straight to your phone. You don't have to cram through everybody yeah. walking around through displays of models. For sure. It's on your phone. You know where to go, and boom, you're done. Mm-hmm. And being that it's such a large event, I do think they really need to take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with that, Sean. Yeah, I think and uh, one of my favorite things is you can go back and look at people's lists, right? So if you oh, want to go back yeah. and look at the top players and see what they're running and try and 
you know, maybe you need to step up your game a bit. You can go back and look at those lists that they were using through that app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think they're going to need to get a bigger space soon. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. Like, yeah. Those tables were tight, and yeah. we're not small people. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like uh, yeah. And there was way more people than there was so ever, right? last year, my count, there were 74 people. This year, they had 104 sign up, 98 participate. And that's just for 40K. And yeah. that was just for the 40K event. Then they added two additional events this year, yeah. um, which is awesome. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but they effectively added about 100 more people in the exact same space we had last year. I don't feel that that was very fair for the 40k guys because man did we feel like sardine cans. And if you didn't get a chair, you were SOL. Yeah. Like I stood for six hours of that nine hour day, oh, wow. you know? Yeah. Um, which, whatever, it is what it is. Um, mm. But I hate that I had to say that saying about 15 times that day. <laughs> It is. Yeah. Well, it is what it, it is. is. So, yeah. It was definitely a little tight in there. I know, um, you know, a lot of us bring carts. Yeah. Right? So it's just like, where, where do I put this guy, right? Yeah. And, and, I, the, and yours was a small display yeah, compared to small. some. Yeah, yeah. Like, it wasn't the, the typical two by two. No. Right? Well, so. there was a guy that had like a full nine or 12 pointed star that had oh, his whole yeah. army on it. And it was like, <laughs> where yeah. do you even get this thing, right? Exactly. It was super cool, but massive to carry around. I mean, it's a good problem to have, right? Yeah, it's, a, exactly. it's awesome yeah. seeing so many people come out to yeah. play. It's awesome having so much mm -hmm. diverse events, even yeah. though they're not 40K, they're, they're 30K, yeah. they're Age of Sigma, yeah. right? Um, Infinity, all that stuff. So yeah. it's, it's pretty awesome. The, the one thing I would say is probably an easy fix is that, okay, so you guys played on the team tournament on Friday. Why didn't the, maybe the like Infinity guys or the X-Wing guys play on that day too? Yeah. You know, I think the only thing I saw, granted, I wasn't there at the time, but all I saw from the photos was just the team tournament. Am I correct? I, that's all I've seen. Yeah. yeah. So, so there, there's there, they had room, right? Yeah. Um, but definitely moving forward, I I, I hope that they are <laughs> going to either expand the space or move events around to give us a little bit more breathing room. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. I will have to say that they um, the pairings mm -hmm. actually went pretty quick, right? Mm -hmm. Even though they didn't use Best Coast pairings, they mm -hmm. they were pretty effective at organizing it and getting mm -hmm. it around and you know. Making sure that you know you didn't play the same person yeah. twice. Yeah, there was one hiccup round two, I think. Yeah, where they, exactly. Yeah, missed yeah. half the list or something yeah. like that. But, but again, you know, yeah, that's an easy fix. So. Exactly. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, comments, guys? Before we talk about the big elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. All, All right. right, big elephant, bring it out. All right, Sean, are you there? Yeah. What would you say yep. was the number one issue you had at the tournament in game? Um, for me personally, yeah, I would say uh, spamming of Forge World bottles. Bing, bing, bing. I think all of us here can actually say, oh my god, the amount of Forge World that hit the table was insane. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just going to throw out a random number. Don't, you know, quote me on it. But I, I feel that one in three armies had Forge World, and of those one in three, about every other person spammed a specific unit or type of Forge yeah. World. Um, I, I brought three units of Forge World thinking I'm a BA, and boy was I wrong! Yeah. Holy cow! Like, so Forge World definitely has a leg up compared to the last edition, I think. It's, in my opinion, it feels very pay to play. Um, which is unfortunate with the edition that we have, where it's actually such a good and feels balanced yeah. edition. Yeah. Um, and, but here I brought a Decimator Demon Engine, a Charybdis Drop Claw, and a Sonic Hellbrute. And Chris, what did you play against? Uh, three Decimator Dreadnoughts and two, uh, what is it, Fire, Fire Raptor yeah. uh, Air Sport. Like, yeah. And I went second. Woof. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. See ya, buddy. Yeah, that's the three Decimators alone are putting out an average of seven mortal wounds at 34-inch range. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, that's fair. Um, that's why the last year, so the year and the year before that and the first year that I attended, when they did Forge World, they did a zero to one. Yeah. You could take one Decimator Demon Engine. You could take one Leviathan Dreadnought, whatever it was you Which want, right? I think right? it's perfectly fair. Yeah, yes. so, but, it, but it spread it out. One, one thing I love about that is that it actually kind of corrects the, the Malefic Lord spam. Mm -hmm. You can't have ten of the same yes. guy cast and smite now because you can only have one of him. Um, I, I think it was really, really cool to see the Forge World stuff we saw there. But if you weren't on that level, you weren't on that level. No, it, was, it was almost like two different tournaments. It right? was. Yeah, yeah. It was like the definitely. GW guys were in their stuff. I mean, I, I brought a Forge World flyer. Yeah. But one. one but you brought one. Yeah. yeah it, it really wasn't that great. 
Um, but I mean, you had the Forgeable guys mm -hmm. playing, and then you had all the GW, you know, pretty mm -hmm. much pure strain. Yeah, yeah, yeah for so. sure. Sean, did you bring any Forge World for your ad mech? No, no, no. Okay, so we don't have any available to us. Yet. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I thought. So, so without having anything like that, how did you feel your list was doing against that other stuff? Um, to be honest, I only ran up against a, somebody taking a lot of Forge World models a couple of times. Okay, um, and to you know, chance with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they were they were typically from like the the Chaos Space Marines where. They were uh, like the drop pods were right up in my face. Yeah. Uh, Raptor fire gun chips. Yeah. You know, blowing me out of the water. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I just didn't have a chance to get my head up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can. I can That's see that. That's a good analogy. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely had an uphill battle. I think. For sure. You know. For sure. And then the irony behind that too is that the three games I played, I played a guard guy, no forge rolled. I played a gray knights player, no forge rolled. Yeah. And then my third guy I played against, he had six cultist units instead of forge rolled. So, like, I even had a little bit of a break. Apparently, I just suck. <laughs> I should have been yeah. just smoking yeah. people, right? But um, I, it was – I think it was to the point that it was just uncomfortable to play against. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, if, if it was my first tournament for Warhammer, oh, yeah. I would not want to go back to a tournament. Oh, my like, God. Like, I'm not saying anything about the tournament no, organizers no, or no, anything like that. No. Like, it's honestly just a forge world. Like, right. You know, I'm a newbie at mm. – Oh, what is it, a baby seal? Yeah. Baby oh, is that the yeah. term? Yeah. A baby or, seal coming in? Yeah. Like, I just Sorry, get romper stopped? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I would not. Actually, would you know what, Chris? This was your first major tournament in a long time. Yeah, right? I mean, like, Rogue Trader, that don't count. This no. was it. And yeah. I, if I would have known what I know now, yeah. I probably would not have come. Because, and I, even if I had the chance and the money, to bring Forge World to the table. Yeah. That's just not the style I like to play. I feel yeah. like it's two game systems mashed into one, and mm -hmm. one is far better than the other. And I like I like my codex and my BRB, and yeah. that's it. Get your <laughs> trash and go play somewhere else. You're not wanted here. Yeah. And that's uh yeah. I would like to play in another competitive I like the com I like to compete and I like mm -hmm. to do that thing. I just like my game. Yeah. You yeah. know, I awesome. like you know, Warhammer, 8th edition, mm -hmm. period, no Forge World, get that yeah, out of here. Yeah, but yeah. I would like to see a non-Forge World tournament. Mm -hmm. And even if you limited it to 0 to 1, one yeah. I think that would change everything yeah, too. Yeah. And I wouldn't be crying as much as I'm crying now. Hand me the <laughs> tissues, <Yeah>. John. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. you seriously just look for tissues? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if there's any down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But, no, I mean but, the yeah. models are amazing though. Like yeah. I, I still want to get a bunch of four dual models. They're yeah, all on sure. my list. It's just mm -hmm. you know it, you have to know what you're getting into. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean it was it was clear that four dual was allowed. I mean yeah. they capped the power level at thirty five. I think. Yeah. It was our expectations that were kind of off. Yeah. Yes. we just were not aware that there'd be so yeah. much, right? Yeah. So. I mean, Mike, I think he said he played against a guy that had two Leviathan Dreadnoughts with the, the cannons on him. Yeah. So he's putting out 24 shots a Dreadnought. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, at, like, strength eight. Like, whoa. Yeah. Like, as a Tyranid player, even with a Malanthrope, how do you deal with that? Exactly. You know? It's a shame he's not here to answer it. But So I do have one small gripe that I want to say about the Forge sure. stuff. Okay? So this was clearly not a GW-sanctioned event. This mm -hmm. was totally locally run, and I love the guys that do. Paul, Bill, Jeff, they do a awesome fantastic guys. job. Mm -hmm. I, can, I, I, I don't want to be into their shoes, right? No. You know, but I'd like to be there to help. The one issue I have the most is they allowed counterfeit models. Mm, when a guy's yeah. walking around and saying, hey, I 3D printed X Forge World model for $10, that is almost disrespectful to me. Yeah. Right? I, I spent yeah. the money. Oh, I horrible. worked hard to get the Forge World model, to have it shipped from England, to paint it up within time, to have it in a display board. Yeah. To basically have my nose rubbed in it, like yeah, and then it takes not even pay to play anymore. Yeah. It's just win, yeah, for right. Cheap. And, and the guy I talked to, he was really really cool. I'm not giving names, you know, because it's I don't want to you know be like that. But as an event organizer, I think me personally, if I saw that come into the Golden Rhino tournament. I'm sorry, but no, you cannot play with that model today. Yeah, like, no yeah, like that's that's not fair to everybody else. There's still so, a hobby aspect too, right? Is. I mean, 3D printed yeah. is is Dude, never going to be as good as no. And terrain that's 3D bring. printed is awesome. Yeah, but that's one thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, but that that's my thoughts, not yours. For sure. For sure. <laughs> that's, 
my thought too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So I, I concur. Cool. Cool. Okay. So I think the the last Sean, did you have any other thoughts from the uh, other side of town over there? No, I think that pretty much covers everything. Cool, okay. cool. Um, I think the last thing we had really on our list was the charity raffle. Yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? So so essentially, uh, Purge the Alien donated a army. Mm-hmm. Um, a Adeptus Mechanicus army, which was pretty awesome, pretty pretty well painted, right? So that got won by actually somebody we know. Yeah, CK of all people. Yeah, like, congrats, man! Like yeah. that's that's awesome. That is amazing. Um, yeah, but the the charity itself yeah. was for a really good cause. Who who was it for, Josh? Yeah, so it was Small Talk uh, Children's Assessment Center, right? So they essentially do. They support children through tra- trauma in their lives, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's abuse or, or whatever it is. So obviously, that's that's the most important item here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they raised quite a bit of money towards it, so that's it's cool. it's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. I think I saw them yeah. count it up; it was pretty high. Yeah, Whenever so. you can do something with your hobby and then you're yeah. helping change the world for the better, that rarely happens. You and know, when you can do it, it's an amazing feeling. Even if it's for one person, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and this went to an organization that helps a lot of yeah. young children and young adults in in problem mm-hmm. situations. Yeah, exactly. So that was that was really good. So yeah. pretty amazing mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. So you know, shout out to the Michigan GT for you know setting that up and yes. organizing and actually yes. doing that charity raffle. It's it's awesome. So mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. and, and for all of you that are listening and that you did participate, thank you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So if yes, we provided anything, the yeah. army, but you provided the money that went to the charity. Exactly. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Any closing thoughts? Um, as far as the GT goes, I'm the only thing I'm going to say is on a scale of one to ten, I give it an eight. It was an awesome event awesome. with yep. room of improvement, and I will be there next year. I will be there next year as well. Same here. I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. So cool. Okay. All right. So uh, one last thing we want to, to introduce. Now that the GT's over, right? Yeah. We want to get into you know, let's, 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 you know get all the the kinks out, right? Yeah. Chris, let's do this. Me and you, you want to do a narrative game? Yes, I do. All right. I've been waiting for you to ask me that my whole life. Yeah. I, <laughs> so okay. So you guys are gonna have to have me on more often because this is awesome. I, I love helping set you guys up and everything, but I want to come back and I want to do some narrative games. So. I, I want you to do. Yeah. yeah right, okay. So Josh, I'm gonna play you. Yeah, Chris, I'm gonna good. play you. Yep. Hey Sean, what are you doing? Playing you. All right. <laughs> there we go. So yeah. So stay tuned. I think that'll be fun. I wanna. I wanna do that. So awesome. So, yeah. So we'll prepare that narrative. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do 40k and... to clarify. Yeah. 40K yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, not, not just yeah. leave everybody on the hook there because I've sure. got I've got a really cool Empress Children Army that I wanna play with. <laughs> Yeah. So and this will motivate me to paint my death guard. Yeah. Because apparently nothing is yeah. doing that. Yeah. It's gotta right. come on the channel, man. I've been I know, waiting. I know it. Plus, I'm dropping the ball. Plus, I have two new worlds for us to play on. Oh. Are these like boy. hidden secret worlds, or are these worlds you've created? Both. Nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. 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 So, cool. All cool. right, guys. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we will. See you next time. Yeah. Or Purge the Alien. Find us on Facebook, YouTube. We do battle reports. We do a bunch of things. Instagram. Instagram. Ooh. Our own webpage. Oh, I guess we have a website too. Yeah, huh? right? Yeah, PurgeTheAlien.com. Check yeah. us out. For gamers, by gamers like you. There you go. Awesome. Thanks for listening, guys. Catch you later. Bye bye. <laughs>